Hey everybody, Steve here. Welcome to video two in my TBS Crossfire series. In the first video, we did all the wiring and all that kind of stuff. And in this video, we're going to get into the TBS Crossfire software and start configuring everything software wise. If you missed the wiring video, please feel free to check the description below for a link to that video. If you're interested in purchasing the TBS Crossfire, please check the description below for a link to where you can get one of your own. All right, first thing I am going to do before I mess with anything is I'm going to go ahead and incorporate my smoke stopper here. Anytime I do any soldering projects, I always incorporate the smoke stopper and uh, I want to give it some power and uh, make sure that uh, nothing electronic goes poof because that is not what you want. So give that guy some power and if we flip it over, we can see that we've got power to our Crossfire Nano. And now I'm gonna get ready to um, update all the firmware and then we'll get into configuring this thing. So at this point, it is time to navigate our way to the Team Black Sheep website. It's team-blacksheep.com. And once you get to the main page, uh, click on shop and then come down to software and TBS agent. And once you get to this page, you're going to want to download, obviously, Windows for Windows, Mac for Mac. I have Windows, so here we go. It is completed. So if I, all right, so I'm going to open up the folder that it's in. Looks like it's a compressed file, so I'm going to go ahead and extract it. Here's the agent. Click in here. And once you get inside the extracted zip, you double click here. Windows is going to try to protect you. I'm going to go ahead and run anyway. And it's going to go ahead and install the software. I'm going to go ahead and register for an account here. And now that I've got an account, I'm going to go ahead and log in. There's my information and boom. And I am now logged in. All right, so I logged in and it wants me to plug my device into a USB to port, the port. All right, so we've gone dual camera and let's see what we got. We got a USB-C type cord here. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. Yeah, it looks like the light came on and it's talking and it's recognizing stuff. Okay, so at this point I'm logged in and my unit is connected. So I'm just gonna go to settings and let's see here, let's go to firmware. And as I may have previously mentioned, I've had this sitting in a box for a while and been waiting to make a video for it. So it's several firmwares old. Go ahead and grab the latest and hit the update button. And as you can see, the device is blinking green while this process happens. All right, so upon completion, you will notice that the Crossfire is blinking orange, and uh, I actually downloaded the manual. And if you look at the manual, you will see little movie quote there for those of you who caught it. Anyhow, gray is not connected. Orange says that it's connected and ready, but it's not synchronized with the cloud. And green is that it's ready and synchronized with the cloud account. Okay, so now is when things really start to heat up and get exciting. Well, I mean, maybe not that exciting, but all right. So we're going to take this guy right here and we're going to push him in the back and we're going to make sure that we are careful to line up the pins and that sort of thing. Like so. Now, we're going to flip them over. And we're going to turn them on. Like so. Welcome to OpenTX. Throttle warning. Switch warning. Disarmed. Angle mode. Roll proportional. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in so that you can see the screen. Okay, so what we're going to do at this point is 
going to long press on model and I'm going to come down. This quad was originally uh, set up with a FR Sky. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to turn I'm going to turn the internal off. I'm going to come down to the external, I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to turn it to CRSF like so. Now what I want to do is I'm going to press on the exit button and then I'm going to press a long press on sys and I'm going to go into crossfire configure and hit enter and it's going to pop open the things that it recognizes so I'm going to click on the micro and here we go we've got some options here first thing I'm going to do is bind I can pull out here all right so I've got this guy right here go ahead and give him a little bit of power and if I flip them upside down we're looking at only the essential information and what we got here we got orange there we got green there well, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the bind button and see what happens it says it's binding that click in red What's this one doing? Confirmation. Update the micro RX. Yeah, I want to update the micro RX. Definitely. So I'm going to hit enter. And updating receiver. Check this out. That's pretty cool. Update receiver. And as you can see, the Nano has been added to the list. So pretty straightforward. All right, so now that they're bound, uh, the Nano has been added to this list. And I can go to the Nano, click on it. And you can see all the information for the Nano. When I scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can look at the Nano uh, firmware version is 4.11. And if I go back here, it appears as though it has been updated. All right, so in my research, I found a couple of people that went into um, XF Nano and clicked on it. And then when they got down to the bottom, they had to fill in these values. They had to actually click on it and choose these values for output one and output two for CRSF, TX, and RX. Just for the sake of saying, I just wanted to let you know, I didn't have to do this. Mine just happened automatically. So uh, if yours didn't, you probably want to go here and change it quick note about this screen uh, about frequency uh, you can come down to the frequency and set the frequency that way as you can see here but the other thing that you can do is if you go up to region and you select region and you select say for example FCC if you make this selection uh, it will lock it up so let me just show you so I just made that decision. I, I chose FCC, and now basically it chose uh, 915 for me, and, and now it's locked. Now I can't change it. Uh, so what you can do to unlock it is flip her over and press this 11, 11 or 12 times. There, get it going like that, different color, and then flip her back over. And as you can see, the region is set to FCC so what we can do is we can go to the region and select open and then what I'm going to do is well it just selected it for me but now you know if I'm in a situation where I want to change it I can change it without having to um, unlock it all right so I've got power to the quad and props are off of course I'm gonna go down to nano and I'm just going to double check that my fail safe is set to cut which it is and that's what I want for a quadcopter Okay, so at this point, let's take a look at the settings in Betaflight. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to plug in the quad to the computer, and I'm going to go to ports, and where did we put it? We put it on um, 6. So I'm going to go ahead and enable that for serial, and save and reboot. And then I've got to go to the config page, come down here, it's already set to serial based. You can see there's options, uh, serial based, and then I'm going to go with CRSF. 
like so. And then don't forget to hit save and reboot. Now that it's configured to talk to Crossfire, let's make sure that we've got everything that we need. If we go over to the receiver tab. All right, so I've got a live quad here and I just want to test to make sure everything's working. There's my throttle, there's my yaw, and there's my roll, there's my pitch and my buttons. Buzzer works. That works good. I can flip the switch for arm motors, but it's not going to arm because it's plugged into the USB. And the way I did that was on the mode screen. I have a lot of other videos on how to make all that stuff happen and the voice and all that kind of stuff. I'll leave a link uh, in the description below to make all that stuff happen. Okay, so I'm pretty much at a point now where I feel comfortable uh, putting this whole thing together and taking it out for its maiden flight. All right, so let's take a look at how it did. And the first thing that you need to know is that this was the very first flight and I was got to admit it. I was a little bit nervous. I didn't want to push it too, too hard. So I am sure that the results, uh, as far as distance are, is going to be much better than this. This is about how far I would normally go. And I would turn around at that white building. I had to get up a little bit here. And as you can see, I'm kind of getting up to this little traffic circle right here. You'll see it go a little bit fuzzy. I panic and turn around. So that was my maiden voyage. That was the first, uh, first flight that I was ever able to take. And it was a little harrowing going that far. I've never gone that far before. So let's look at the differentiation in the distance from my 2.4 to the Crossfire. This is where I start and I would never really fly the 2.4 any further than this, which is point, what is that, point 0.36 of a kilometer. Well, this time we went to here and then we continued on to here, about right there, I guess. So point 0.81 of a kilometer. Let's look at it now how the crow flies from here to here. 0.68. At this range, we have barely scratched the surface on how far we can go with Crossfire. Uh, as a matter of fact, in this particular case, we are limited uh, by our 5.8 gigahertz video system. And of course, I probably could have gone further, but I chose not to because I didn't want to lose the quad on the very first flight. I'll have opportunities in the future to go to my in-laws house and uh, they've got uh, a parcel of land with several hundred acres. So uh, we'll do that then. As far as this guy's first ever flight with TVS Crossfire. This is, uh, this is where we ended up and there will be many, many more flights and there will be many, many more videos uh, as I get better at this whole thing. So that's pretty much a wrap on this video series. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, please like comment and subscribe. Don't forget there's a convenient link in the description so that you can go and get yours as well. Many more videos to come. So I hope to see you next time. See ya.